Clawco on the web just released yesterday. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I use Clawco on the web to 10x my productivity as a software developer. So first thing first, I'm going to show you how you can be able to set this up, how you can be able to use it inside of your browser. And second, I'm going to show you how you can connect it through your GitHub account and also how you can be able to set this up on your local machine so that you can continue the conversations from the web or mobile to your local machines to continue the building. And second or lastly, if you stick to the end of this video, I'm going to show you my personal work flow on how I use Clawco on the web to 10x my productivity as a software developer. So with that being said, if you're interested, let's get into it. All right, so to get started, first thing first, we're gonna to navigate to claw.ai slash code. And here we're getting to the onboarding process to connect our GitHub accounts with Claw code. So what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna to connect to GitHub. And then here you can see Claw would like to have permissions to verify our GitHub accounts. Also, we'd like to understand the GitHub resource we would like to have Claw to access. So here we're just gonna click on authorize Claude. Awesome, so once we authorize Claw code with the GitHub access, here's the page where we're gonna use Claw code on the browser. So you can see that right away we have our prompt window where we can be able to start type things for what we wanna have Claw code build. And then there's also the repository selection. So we can select any repositories that we have inside of our GitHub accounts. So here there's also the environment. So here we can be able to import our environment keys, environment variables, right inside of the environmental variables here. And there's also the network access. So let's say if you're using the company network or maybe you're using like VPN, you can try to change your network access here. So the custom access, you can be able to change your domains for the network here. And there's also the names you can select for the cloud environment here. So because this cloud code is running in the cloud in a virtual environment, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to test it out with a repository that I have built with the last video. So here you can see that we have a AI diagrammer. Basically I use a node code builder here to build this application. And and this is what the application looks like, right? So we can draw things. So pretty much you can have AI to generate any diagrams you like. And what we can do is we can be able to have Clawco here to first try to initialize this project and also try to create a better readme file here. So then what I did here is I basically select this repository for the AI diagrammer, which is what I mentioned here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it to first try to understand this code base. So here I'm just gonna do a init command to see if it's able to understand this project first. And here I'm just gonna also enable the notifications. And here you can see that it start to do the initialization for this project. So it uses the slash init command and it's gonna analyze the project, try to understand its structures and everything else. Now, before we jump into the next section, let me give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, TestBright. TestBright is an AI agent that's specifically for software testing. With the release of the TestBright MCP, you get a chance to use the TestBright MCP inside of your coding IDE, like clock code, cursor, windsurf, and more with simply just adding the configurations inside of the MCP settings, you can use it right away. With the TestBright MCP, it not only understands what you want, because it first reads through the code base, understands the documentations, as well as validates the results that your agent wrote. And it is doing that by automatically generating the test plan for the PRD documentations and producing the test cases and test coverage without any manual inputs. And then from there, it will basically start to execute the test and then be able to send the reports back to you by telling you exactly what's broken. With normal coding accuracy of 42% from other coding agents, we can be able to improve that with TestBright MCP with the feature delivery accuracy of 93%. So if you're interested to try it out, you can check out this video that I made or you can check out the link in the description for more details. Awesome, so now you can see that it has successfully run the initial command for the project initialization and here's what it creates. So it creates a comprehensive cloud.md file for the AI diagram repository and here are the things that it creates. So the file includes the development commands, the environment variables, as well as the architecture overviews, development guidelines and so much more. So basically it also has add the cloud MD file in the commit as well. So here you can see it is ready to create a pull request. So what we're gonna do is we can try to test it out to see if it works. So I'm just gonna click on create a pull request. And here you can see to create a pull request on the main branch. So it creates a branch and it's gonna be the initialized projects with a ID here. And here you can see we have our uh, description for the PR and also the title. And here are the changes that we have made for this pull request. So we have our cloud MD file, the project review, development commands, the environment variables, and so much more, right? So pretty much you can see that it creates the title, the pull request descriptions, as well as the changes that made. All we had to do here, just simply just create a pull request. Or what we can do is we can be able to continue on and be able to ask more things. For example, like create a readme file for this project and make sure to use mermaid for for the diagram visuals 
on this system architecture and include the setup for this project in the readme as well. And here I'm just gonna send this request and let clock code in the browser here do the implementation. And while it's doing that, there's also an open to in CLI as well. So it basically gives you a command copy as well. And let's say if I wanna to navigate to that section inside of my local machine, what I can do here is I can simply first clone the repository. And once I clone this, I will make sure to CD into it for the diagram. And here I make sure I have the command copied and navigate to the terminal, I'm just going to run the session. So here you can see that we can be able to teleport back to the session that we just had inside of our browser. So you can see that this is what we had before for the initial conversation. We asked it to do the initialization for the code base. And then after it does that, it basically do the comprehensive understanding. And here's basically trying to create the MD file for this project and also creating a mermaid diagram to show the system architecture and here you can see currently it has done that. All right, so now you can see that if I were to navigate to the pull request again, and here you can see that there are two changes that I made. So add the claw.md file and also a readme file for the mermaid architecture diagram. So here, if I were to close this and try to view this file, here you can see that this is what it looks like. And here you can see that this is a system diagram, which we have our authentications. And then there's also the canvas, the AI input, the autosave, the history hooks, and also the toolbar and so much more, okay? And here there are the tech stack. So we're using React, TypeScript, and also the AI integrations and so much more. Okay, so pretty much this is how we can be able to set up, right? That's also what I mentioned inside of the, um, the command. All right, so once we satisfy with this, we can also be able to create a title for this pull request. I'm just gonna say, what should we put for the PR on the title? And also for the description as well, where we can get the PR title for this as well as the description for what we're trying to create inside of this pull request. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it here for the description. And if I were to view this in preview, this is what we have for the summary, changes, readme file, and the purpose, testing plan. And here I'm just gonna create the pull request. And here if I were to navigate to the pull request, you can see that we have one pull request open, which was created by Claw Code mostly. And here you can see that this is what it looks like. And that's pretty much how we can be able to interact with claw code in the browser and be able to merge this eventually. And if we were to merge this, you can see that if I were to navigate back, here you can see the status is currently merged for the pull request. And we can be able to pretty much start a new session from here, okay? And now inside of the main branch, I can simply just do a git pull and it will should be able to pull the latest change that we made in the virtual cloud. All right, so what I wanna talk about now is basically my personal workflow on how I use claw code web version to improve my productivity as a developer. So so basically what we used to have before is where we have claw code running on a single environment in a development workflow. So for example, we have our dev one here, developer one using claw code on its own computer. And in this case, working on this project X and it's gonna create its own branch, right? So we'll get have project uh, branch one, which is working on a feature one or a single feature. And let's say we wanna to switch to another branch to work on a different thing or a different task. We have to wait until the branch one is complete before we have to uh, switch to different branch, right? Because here we can only run one branch in one environment at a time. And that's really the biggest problem. So now with Claw Code Web Version, we really solve this by having each session here basically run on its own branch, right? So we can have multiple sessions running at the same time and each session has its own virtual environment. And pretty much we can be able to scale this and have multiple sessions at a run running at the same time to develop a project. So let's say we're trying to you know, implement a button, for example, right? We can have one session here working on the UI, one session working on the backend, the other session here working on the database. If those tasks can be break down and run in a parallel. And each of them run on its own virtual environment. And basically there's not gonna be any conflicts or anything. So we can pretty much have this to be run at the same time and really speed up the development workflow to be able to have three different clock code sessions that creates the branch, creates the pull request. And at the end of this, we can simply just basically pull the changes from the different sessions of clock code test it, verify the changes, and then be able to merge it to the main branch. And you can see here that with this workflow right here, with Claw Code Web Version, we can pretty much improve our productivity. And as a developer here, we no longer have to rely on one single environment to be done before we can switch to another environment to be able to work on the task or another branch for a feature. We can be able to, starting from top down, be able to take a task, 
break it down into multiple sessions and have different clock code sessions, create a solution for us in its own virtual environments, test it on our end, and be able to eventually merge this change onto the main branch and call the project to be finished. So pretty much that's my take on how I think clock code web version really improves the productivity for developers. And if you are a developer, please comment down below, what's your thoughts on clock code web version? Does this workflow applies to you? And of course, if you do find value this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.